In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a Korean lever that has one of the most predominant names in Tekken, known as Rock's Dragon's Knee. Even has it here, and look at that, that he's right there at the bottom. This one here in particular is a limited run version, 222 of 250 to be exact, which was actually, they did a limited run back in October of 2019, mid, early mid-October. The only difference that I know that's gonna be the biggest difference between the base model and the limited is the fact that the limited actually came with a few shafts. It came with three shafts, one for the knee lever and two spare. Unfortunately, during the time I was putting this video together, the base model's design actually changed because IST had some problems with the red molding. The base model is now a black body with a red mounting plate, unlike the limited version where it's a red body and a black mounting plate. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. In this review, I wanted to do things a little different. I'm going to be comparing to a base model version of this kind of lever, which is known as the 47C Alpha series. And the knee lever in its case is actually similar to how the uh, Crazy Dom Tao was a modified version of the 303 and 309 MJ and the Fuji V3, which is a modified version of the Myung Shin because the knee lever is pretty much just a modified version of the Alpha series of levers. Now the benefit of having a no collar having ass lever usually keeps the characteristics of a full collar lever just obviously in a no collar having ass lever form. Let's go ahead and take a look at what makes the knee lever different from any of the other levers that I've recently looked at. See if the aluminum parts that this one actually offers benefits the lever for the better or for the worse. Let's get into it. I guess we'll start with the obvious being the aluminum parts. The aluminum shaft allows the player to feel more tension or resistance without changing out the grommet while offering a fast return to neutral compared to its OEM steel shafts. The shaft is thread it and comes with a wrench in the box for a quick install but be sure to mount a countersunk bad top for optimal lever height. The other aluminum part is the 15 and mm actuator while not being much heavier than say its plastic or urethane counterparts. When it comes to tension a new grommet was born for this lever known as the 35A hypertension grommet. The switches chosen for this lever are the Omron 3A5 which are stiffer than say something of the Gersung A2s but a hair lighter than the Gersung A3s. One thing I did notice is the consistency in feel and sound as some of my Gersungs in the past had differences whether it be in sound or just the overall feel. And finally, the most eye-catching element, the Rock's Dragon Bat Top. It looks fucking noise! Thankfully, the engravedliness does not compromise the overall feel, but I can see how people wouldn't like it as it is pretty much in-your-face branding. That's pretty much it for knee levers entirety. With the specs out of the way, we can talk about how knee felt in my hands. This entire combination allows the lever to feel relatively sensitive and soft, so for those of you who have a lighter touch, this will probably suit you the best. The grommet is rated at 35A, but when I compared it to my blue 35A, it does feel a step below. Not quite quite the 32, but probably a 33 or a 34 if one existed. The diagonal area is pretty large thanks to the actuator and switch combo, which helped my busted ass one player electrics. I also noticed my instant while running moves were easier to confirm as triple tapping the lever doesn't require much force, but the tension still allows for an easy return to neutral. The word smooth is what comes to mind when I'm playing on the knee lever, though I don't know really how to explain it, but the balance between all the parts makes for a seamless feel when it comes to actuation. However, that isn't to say I didn't have any groin pains. At the beginning, I had got a lot of missed inputs as I would overcompensate for movements allowing the bigger size actuator just to pretty much do whatever the fuck it wants and hit every unintended switch when I would get careless. <laughs> Honestly, the reasoning behind this is probably because my hands don't work good. To compensate, I simply toned down my hand movement to be less aggressive and most of my problems began to disappear. So I can definitely see players who maybe don't utilize the entire throw range or don't find yourself riding in color like I would 1994 Cameron Diaz in this day and age, the knee lever would probably fit someone like you a lot more than someone like me. I'm looking at you JLF players. The bad top does spin more than I'm used to reminding me of the Kaze V3, but thankfully did not have an absolute shit bat top. It is far more manageable and way more comfortable. After taking a vacation in the hyperbolic time chamber, I still suck, but I was able to adapt enough to play on this lever like any of my other ones. Yeah. 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 
Speaking of the levers, let's take a look at the Alpha 47C. As I mentioned before, the 47C is pretty much the base model design, having the steel shaft, the deco switches which are actually stiffer than the Gerslung A3s, the 32A grommet, the smaller 15.2mm actuator, and the same bat top as the Kaze, but just, it's... It's whatever. When I move the lever left and right, it's almost like a tactile bump that you can sometimes feel at the bat top giving you a clear indication of actuation, which is probably one of my best things that I liked about this lever. Unlike the smooth and seamlessness that's offered from the knee lever. In terms of the diagonal areas, the 47C is definitely more narrow and does take a little bit more oomph to confirm it. I noticed this mainly when I was trying to reach for something like a up forward during a dive kick as I would miss my input usually on the 47C more than the knee lever. Finally, the throw distance of the knee lever is near identical to a full color offering, say something like the 29GN that I did in my last video, while the 47C is about 2-3mm to three millimeters shorter. The 47C is pretty much the tactile and clicky MX Blue, where the knee lever is the fast and sensitive MX Gray when it comes to overall feel. Between the two, it's definitely going to come down to the player's preference, as there's not really any standout pro or con for me to be like, yeah, they suck. If you want something less tension with tighter corners and a heavier switch, then the 47C can be an option. If you want something that's a medium tension with bigger corners but a softer overall feel, then the knee lever might be your option. And speaking of the knee lever, I tried some things to mitigate some of my problems that I was having and this is what I found. At first I thought the Omron switches were too soft until I bought the Omron 6A5s to try out thinking they were different. Well, I was wrong. They are actually the same as the 3A5s just with a different part number, so I swapped these switches out in my Fujin with them and the missed inputs I experienced on the knee lever were pretty much non-existent. It turns out the actuator size is more of a problem for me personally as I swapped out the 47C actuator and my directions were noticeably cleaner. So if you do feel like you may experience something similar, this may help you as well. I also tried putting the A3s from my Fujin into the knee lever and got a similar result which added enough resistance without dramatically changing the experience of the lever like swapping out a grommet that can happen at times. Even though I do prefer full collars, I do wish I started out on the flat collars since the experience is pretty similar to the big boy levers and I wouldn't have cut up so many sticks. The flat collar experience is great for an entry into these type of levers offering an ease of installation, a similar throw distance to a big boy lever unlike a short collar's offering, and being just as moddable as any others to fit your personal taste. So yeah, no matter if it's the knee lever, the 47C, or the middle ground 49S, I think people would be happy with either one. Anyway, going back to the reason why I even bothered comparing the two. The way I see it, if you don't have like a starting point of what a lever should feel like, then you won't know what the modified version has to offer, whether it be a pro or a con. When I got my first Myungshin, I advertise a friendly word hated it but I was at least able to identify the pros and cons for myself and find something that better suited me not to mention after going back to the Myung Shin after some time my second time around it was way more positive because I knew the adjustments I needed to do to make it work so looking at something like the crazy dong pal the Fujin v3 or in this case the knee lever they it's definitely targeted to somebody who already knows what they want now it won't be wrong to choose any of these levers as your first one but some levers might be so different that it may not fit your taste so results may very so <coughs> sorry my voice is not <coughs> ready <coughs> wow sorry if you probably couldn't tell i'm still getting over being sick my voice is in and out so rounding this out it's pretty obvious what my opinion is the knee lever is soft and sensitive and definitely for somebody who has precise control and a lighter touch if you're maybe somebody coming from a korean lever already and you're playing on something 40 48 and higher maybe, you might have difficulty playing on it, not because of the tension or the lack of tension, it's really more because of the ease of actuating the switch, just due to the overall combination that the knee lever offers. But if you're somebody like me who has a heavier hand, just dropping in some Gersling A3s will probably be the thing that would fix it the most, because that's the one I've heard probably, I wouldn't say most often, but I've heard people have done, because people do feel like the knee lever can be too soft if they're already accustomed to something that's more tension. The knee lever is probably going to be my go-to uh, collarless lever for the time being, uh, I think I'm going to be keeping it around playing on it after a while. I'm thinking about just taking out everything and putting it in the Fujin, but I've been experimenting with the Fujin shaft size. I'm going to be doing a video on perfecting your lever in the future, but I'll save that when that time comes. Now let's say you buy the lever, you've seen videos on the lever, whatever it is, and you just don't like it at all. You think it's the most terrible lever out there. But on IST's website, or even the description of this lever, the lever was built with knees placed out in mind entirely. So if you don't like the lever, then you're not knee. There's nothing wrong with that. The only thing wrong with that is the fact that Ni, nee, the human himself, cannot help you with a life outside of pools. But maybe, just maybe, this inanimate, inanimate, this inanimate object that is Ni's nee's aura may be able to birth a life outside of pools. Or you could be like a scrub like me, forget your floaties, and drown in pools. Peace out, until next time. Welcome.